Michael Faraday made an amazing discovery regarding how magnetic fields can actually create currents in circuits. We're going to talk about a connection then between magnetic fields and currents in circuits. Until now, we've found, seen the following connections between circuits and magnets. First of all, we've seen that magnets feel a force and will move due to a magnetic field. So if we were to have two magnets nearby one another, their magnetic fields would interact and they would feel a force. In the picture shown, I've shown an attractive force between a north and a south pole from two different bar magnets. Here, this picture shows the repulsive force of two bar magnets where the south poles are facing one another. We've also seen where magnetic fields can be created by currents, and so they can also move magnets. In other words, if I have a current carrying wire that has a magnetic field curling around it, that can actually turn a compass needle. And that's because the magnetic field from the wire interacts with the magnetic field from that bar magnet. Or we could also draw a loop of wire which has a magnetic field exactly like a bar magnet. And so in this picture, I show the south pole of a loop of wire attracting the north pole of this magnet. Now we're going to look at something a little bit surprising. This is a circuit in which there's a coil of wire connected to a light bulb, shown right here, connected to a voltmeter. So this is not a battery or anything, it's just something that measures the voltage. Notice that right now nothing is happening in the circuit, no current is flowing, the light bulb isn't on, and that's because it would normally be the case that to drive a current through a circuit, one needs a battery. I also have a magnet sitting right here next, next to the coil on the table. If I start to move the magnet into the coil, notice that the voltage goes on for a short time and the light bulb actually lights up. It's not just the case that if I place the magnet inside the coil, the, the, the current flows. In fact, here's the magnet sitting right inside and nothing's happening. The light bulb only seems to go on during the times that I'm actually moving the magnet. Just looking at the, the light bulb alone, it's hard to say in which direction is the current flowing in the circuit. Is it flowing kind of clock, counterclockwise like this, up through the light bulb and then down to the voltmeter, and then back to the coil? Or is it flowing clockwise, where it starts at the voltmeter, goes up to the light bulb, and then down to the coil? The, volta the voltage here can tell us something about that. Notice that when we push the, the north pole in, the voltage goes positive. If we pull the north pole out, the voltage goes negative during that time. I'll do that again. If I push the north pole in, the voltage goes positive. If I pull the north pole out, it goes negative. On the other hand, if I turn the magnet around and now face the south pole toward the coil, and drive the magnet in, the voltage actually goes negative. And I pull the south pole out, and the voltage goes positive. It seems to matter in which direction the magnet faces. And it seems to matter also how quickly I do this. Notice if I move very, very, very slowly, the voltage does not budge, and the light bulb does not go on. If I do it very quickly, though, the voltage gets very large. What I've observed, and was discovered first by Michael Faraday, is that the magnetic field from this bar magnet can create a current inside the circuit. And it's the magnetic field having to change that does so. It seems to matter whether or not a north pole or a south pole is being shoved into the coil. Because if I flip it around, I get the opposite direction of current. Michael Faraday then developed a model where he imagined that the magnetic field lines were coming out of this bar magnet and it was the change in magnetic field lines going through that coil that was responsible for making the current flow. Faraday's discovery was that if we insert a magnet into a loop of wire, a current is induced. And what he found is that for a north pole being shoved into that loop of wire right there so that the field lines point into that loop, the current would be counterclockwise. On the other hand, if we pull that magnet now back out of that loop, a reverse current is formed 
and the current would be clockwise. If we flip the poles of the magnet and insert a south pole instead, again a, a reverse current is formed and the current would be clockwise. If we pull the south pole out, we would now see a counterclockwise current, much like we would have if we had inserted a north pole. Faraday also discovered that the magnitude of this current depends on the speed of the, or the change, how quickly we pull this magnet in and out of the coil. This is quite surprising because previously we thought that batteries were the only thing that could drive a current in a circuit. In order to have a current flowing through a resistor like a light bulb, there had to be a voltage someplace, and the voltage is what shoved current through that resistor. So the question is, does this mean that the changing magnetic field in that loop acts like a voltage? The answer is yes. Faraday developed the following empirical formula to describe what was happening. He suggested that a voltage was induced in the loop, so V induced, which is equal to the negative of the change in something called the flux. The flux is the magnetic field from the bar magnet dotted into the area of the loop. And we'll talk about Faraday's empirical formula and what it means. Magnetic flux through a loop of, cer of a certain area is a measurement of how much magnetic field goes through a loop. So in this case, a blue random loop of wire is pointing around like so. And the area is a, a vector which points perpendicular to that loop and is, whose magnitude is proportional to this, the surface area of the loop. So this is a completely fictitious area vector. There's no thing out there in space that actually looks like that area vector. It's just a, rep a mathematical representation. It represents, its magnitude represents the, the size of the area of the loop, and its direction represents a perpendicular relative to the, the plane of the loop of wire. This quantity of magnetic field dotted into this area vector is a measurement of how much magnetic field there is going right through the loop and how well aligned they are. Because if you remember, the dot product is equal to the magnetic field magnitude times the magnitude of the area times the cosine of the angle between them. If the loop is perpendicular to the magnetic field, then this dot product is large. If the loop is in the plane of the magnetic field, then this dot product is small. Faraday's discovery, then, is that if we have a changing magnetic field in through a loop, we also are changing some quantity called the magnetic flux. And that magnetic flux, when it's changing, creates a voltage in the loop, which creates a current in the loop. We'll explore the direction of this current and the magnitude of this current in our future work, but it's important to remember that it's only when a magnetic field is changing that it induces a current. This is kind of the opposite of where we started, where we started with a current can cause a magnet to change in its direction. But now we found that if a magnet is changing in its direction, it can actually create or cause a current. This is called Faraday's Law of Induction.